We'll see if game two changes the strategy for the guys in Luminosity. Right now trailing zero to one in memory of Gabe. Do you have the first pick? So they're going to ban Poseidon right away. They don't want to see that across the side. I wouldn't be surprised to see in memory of Gabe looking for that Kabrakin pick, considering how well we just saw Juarez display oh, it. Great. And not to mention, it, it's just such a strong factor right now. He has so much damage early on. Plus, when you add in the Vanguard on top of his Tremors, it, it, there's a ton of lockdown potential. And it looks like Sir Ket is going to be the immediate go-to for in memory of Gabe. Simon Shore, previously playing on the console scene, comes over and joins in memory of Gabe, which is pretty much a, a, a a all-star team of North American either already proven themselves or players that have just done so. Sonor Shore on the circuit, he did it on the box, he's doing it here on the PC. He looks very strong, uh, and, and this is a character that I think low-key in game number one. If we rewatch the VOD taco, uh, I think we're going to see circuit has a large impact in those team fights, so absolutely. And there you go, Wally gets his Kabrakin. <laughs> he gets his Kabrakin in the top three picks, so I'm sure that he's pretty satisfied with that. And at the same time, what you just made mentioned how Sir Kett was kind of a uh unmentioned factor but who was probably having a lot of impact mm -hmm. i think the medusa as well on oh, yeah. hurry wind we didn't really get a chance to talk too much about it because it was mostly just snoopy having his way with luminosity alongside of walrus but that medusa ultimate coming out at such ideal times for in memory of gabe was also another determining game factor for memory again. It was, it was really hard. You can't fight into that petrify, especially when your team's already behind. I, I, I agree. I'm not rolling my eyes at your assumption. <laughs> of how, I, I just, I'm tired of Scotty. Your Scotty. I <laughs> saw the Scotty pick come through and I knew immediately how you feel about it. We've, yeah. we've had so many discussions about this god. <laughs> the character is doing well right now, so we'll see her picked up. Morgan will be played as well. Neath here. Yeah, when it comes down to Herwin, Herwin for a long time has just been the role player on whatever teams he winds up on. And I think a lot of people take that statement negatively, but absolutely Absolutely not. While you have your superstars that are winding up, you know, pulling out the highlight reels and stuff, Harwind every game is making sure he, he's the cogs that just sit in the background, making sure that everything's working and those ultimates come through to set up Snoopy and Walrus's Kabrak and the, the acid spray comes out to set up the damage for Sir Kett to drop the ultimate and spread the poison amongst the rest of the team. So no real surprise there. Changa will be the selection. Maybe for her win. You can never really tell what Snoopy's <laughs> going to play. So in memory of Gabe, up one to none, taking on LG for game number two. We'll take it to the battleground of the gods to see who winds up on top. And now we get to see where Chunga is. And it will be the mid lane. That's where you're expected to see her if you're a newer viewer. But in memory of Gabe, just uh, Snoopy is known for taking mages into that long lane. So want to be extra careful. Already immediately liking this draft significantly more than the previous one we just saw out of Luminosity. So much more early to mid game presence coming out for Luminosity, which should really help them in preventing in memory of Gabe to just snowball the game early on like we saw in game number one. And now Ionic once again on this Sobeg and Snoopy on the knee. That's a really high clearing lane, mm -hmm. but they're having to face off against the sex tank with the Bacchus and Scotty. Yeah. Scotty, as we're well aware, has excellent early lane clearing potential. Barracuda looks like he might be left alone again this time around, so he's probably just going to opt to secure these mini creeps off of the red buff, purple buff potentially, and then just safely farm away in lane. A little bit better of a character, I think, to be left alone is uh, Barracuda on the Scotty. Much different world than we saw last time around. Interesting start coming out from Luminosity. However, Mask and Baskin are going to start and uh, the enemy speed buff. I, I think that that's a, a smart decision to make for Luminosity, though, because they probably recognize that Hurrywind and Sinoja immediately opted to just secure their own red buff. Mm -hmm. So they might as well rotate over to the speed, pick that up, take away the little bit of extra mobility from Sinoja on the circuit. And now with Mask having the speed buff available on the Morrigan, as well as his own buffs available to clear out, that's a ton of experience, which is what you'd want, because the sooner this Morrigan hits level five, the sooner she gets to take whatever she wants as far as god kits are concerned in the game. Exactly. So she definitely wants to really boost that up and match right away. 
seems to be doing just fine. Again, this is so much more about how the individual pilots the character than the character itself. One of the more difficult gods, I think, in Smite, not just because of how you have to execute the ultimate and pick a character and the quickness of the decision making, but also the fact that, you know, her own kit does offer a little bit as well. So you kind of have to, one, you have to be functional or, or at least competent at playing the other character that you're going to turn into. And then you also <laughs> have to be competent at the character you're playing. So, you know, for a jungler to train transform into, let's say, a Chang'a, although I don't think that's going to be the target, really. <laughs> um, that's going to be a little bit awkward if you're not practicing that Chang'a jungle like DJ has. So it's really up to Mask to really flex and show us just how many characters can you play? <laughs> how many gods are actually in your god pool? Exactly, yeah. And for Scary D, it looks like Osiris is a part of his god pool as he's making this lane extremely more difficult for Walrus this go around. Just already poking him out to under half health, not having a care in the world about those tremors, and Walrus looking really low on mana, especially considering that he didn't get to have his blue buff, and when you're a Kabracken, blue buff is probably one of the most important things in the game at the Jeff start. Jeff Hindler served up, <laughs> but he'll walk away. That's one of the nice things about having the, uh, the Bacchus, is that if you do get plucked, you just jump back to exactly where you were before. <laughs> Pretty, pretty ideal scenario for him to be in in comparison to a Kepri where before he was kind of just getting plucked and having to be manhandled and I, I'm sure he wasn't too happy about that last game. So we can probably expect him to be looking for the engagements onto Ionic if anything this go around. Absolutely. I mean, especially when you combine with the damage out of uh, Barracuda. I think Jeff's just kind of done of being plucked and killed. <laughs> so three minutes in, we're seeing more of a more of a stagnant game than we did earlier because the the Shibalaki was just so easy to punish that we didn't. See, we, that's all we saw. We just saw Snoopy coming in and punching out Barracuda or the enemy in the or or um, Imog in at Luminosity's jungle right there, not really allowing Barracuda to walk away. That was what we were focused on before. There was there was an abundance in the nothingness. Now. It's kind of just farming. It's it's entirely farming, not to mention that Scotty versus Neath, that is a really safe laning matchup. And speaking of Ooh. safe, Scary D might not be so safe himself as the gank is coming through from Sinosure, popping the ultimate, following up Snoopy's ultimate, and the poison will be enough. First blood going the way of Sinosure. Jeff Hindler pops over the wall, Mask is in tow, uses Morgan to change into the Medusa, and there's two of them! One gets one, and the other gets the other. Baskin winds up with the kill. That was a cute play. Love it. <laughs> Morgan working out very well here for Luminosity. Too many petrifies, and everybody turns into a rock. <laughs> that is, that, that's actually pretty hilarious when you think about it, because you just, you just don't really expect that. You, you think you're getting away. They both split up with that forking maneuver, and it just made zero difference whatsoever. Just both completely cut off, and, and excellent gameplay overall by Luminosity. That That's the response you want to see when your solo laner is falling down. Yeah, just shout outs to the ma to mask right there figuring out, you know, that cuz Medusa is probably not the number one character that you're thinking about, right? When you're making that chase down, I'm, you know, as a jungler, maybe your mind snaps immediately to the Circuit, right? She's got a lot of mobility, the ultimate available, that probably a great character for the chase down, but the Petrify out of Medusa was exactly what Mask needed at that moment in time to really secure that kill. Or Kabracken even. Yeah. Kabracken is also another factor that Mask could certainly have a lot of free reign with should he opt for that route, but at the same time, Scary D already back into the lane and still maintaining a slight lead over Walrus here in that solo lane, despite having just been first blooded. I mean, that's that's the decision making that we were talking about with respect to the Morgan, and whether she's in the jungle, the solo, the mid, wherever she's at, it's going to be a troublesome situation. Again, same play coming out this time. Scary D is a little bit ready for it. One, he's in a better position, and two, like I said, he already saw this episode. He saw that So one. he's going to go, as soon as that Neath ultimate comes on him, he's not thinking he might be able to deal with it. He's running right for the tower and just outranges Sino's madness ticks. Just a, just a little bit of deja vu falling <laughs> through that way. And, and Sino's here again. He, he might have a crush on him. Yeah, this is deja vu all over again. <laughs> hey, 
Walrus, you forget what the Osiris passive does? He walks right on through the wall. No big deal. Not only is it damage mitigation, it's also a phantom for himself. So Osiris not going to have trouble there, but Eonic, he's going to have trouble there. Maracuda picks up the third kill for him and his squad. The first kill for him, rather. Third kill for his squad. Trouble for Baskin. Sound of Shore drops to Zigzag, and he drops to mid lane Hunter. Baskin falls down, and that'll be the first death for the Hunter. And Hurrywind able to just barely escape. Excellent peeling done by the side of a memory of Gabe to just ensure that Hurrywind was able to get out on that Changa yep. despite having expended his immobility. Or is a, is a mobile presence, so. I, I, I got what you're you, saying. You, you know, you, I was following. You're, you're getting what I'm putting down, so it's fine. Exactly. Right now, Luminosity grouped up in three. They want to put up. They want to put Walrus down because that has been scary. D has been the focus for in memory of Gabe. Not only two times did we see the all-out initiation come out with the Snoopy help, but when that failed the second time, Sino still went for the kill. Why is in memory of Gabe so focused on this Osiris? The issue here, though, with Sinosia placing so much focus onto Scary D is that it's actually permitting Scary D to maintain this lead over Walrus. Sure, he has to play a little bit more passive, but every single time Sinosia is picking up three creeps, three yep. melee minions, a wave, and all that farm being split between him and Walrus is just permitting Scary D to keep acquiring his own solo farm, and with that in tow, he's able to just comfortably ride it out. And these Sir Cat ganks aren't really as much of a threat at this stage in the game when it's a level 10 Osiris now, and no. he's a soul laner. He's, he's just gonna be building tank the entire time, for the most part, and with how much pressure he's already exerting over Walrus, I, I think that these ganks are actually starting to work against Gabe. Luminosity looking on the left side. Gold Fury not up just yet, but the Oracles certainly are. Jeff in the half HP already. Here's going to be Mask again, opting for the Hunter, using Petrify to change the situation. And Ionic very low, but a nice ultimate out of Snoopy is going to stick Mask right where he stopped. And again, Mask opting, like I said, for the Medusa. That's going to be twice in a row. Trying to brush up on his ADC skills a little <laughs> bit, get Barracuda a run for his money. So, in interesting enough, though, that... Luminosity immediately after that fight are just leaning straight towards this side with the elementals just wanting to ensure that they pick up as much farm as possible on the map right now while the oracles and gold fairy are unavailable yeah there's just nothing really on the dual lane side for to get for these teams so Lumi just staying away nine minutes in so far we've got three kills to two luminosity on the heavier side right there and also with respects to the gold they're about three thousand gold in the lead maybe closer to two but either way luminosity having the more successful game here certainly a different story than game number one in which in memory of gabe was able to just put luminosity down from minute one lg went for a very late game composition and in memory of gabe made sure that they just couldn't get there here in game number two luminosity change up their draft a little bit and shouts to mask who's had a nice performance with the Morrigan so far. One important aspect to note, though, as far as the dual lane is concerned, is that Barracuda has already finished his transcendence, so that means he's going to have the stack benefit on his side. But Snoopy is still trailing a little bit behind there. He doesn't have the full power spike available to himself mm. yet or his team, because that's really what he's looking for with how much he's been spamming his Neath ultimate. Pretty much every single time it's been available, Gabe has been trying to exert some sort of pressure and again we see the same play Sinosure, scary d and ultimates all over again this time and luminosity though they're going to respond three players show up to protect their soul and if scary d doesn't fall down that's going to be two and a half ganks in a row right because <laughs> we saw that first one that failed and then sound of shore just looped around and tried again so we'll call it three separate ganks but two and a half ganks that oh. fail sino walks right into baskin Ooh, gets hit with the ultimate one-man stun. Ionic, beautiful block coming out from Scary D to stop Ionic in his tracks, but I don't know if Lumi can really chase this. Mask again goes for the Medusa. Not going to find a kill that time around. Portal Demon will be the object of choice for LG to look at. No kills for Mask on that Petrify from the Morgan ultimate, but at the same time, it did force out Hurrywind's beads. And so with that unavailable, in memory, it gave a pretty tough decision to make and whether or not they want to try and contest this Portal Demon. Ionic and Herwin look like they want to. Snoopy says yes as well. Portal Demon goes down to Luminosity despite Imog's best efforts. And here Herwin gonna fall. Barracuda 
picks up the mid lane mage. Not going to be enough is one dance. Ionic low, and he's low enough to be zero. Kevin low over the top gets the kill with the belly flop. Nice damage coming out from the rest of the squad. And here, this time, Walrus trying to escape with his life. A quarter of HP to his name. Dashing forward is going to be Baskin. Can't grab him just yet. Burp not going to stun either. Just barely walking away. But Mask gets the kill on the Morrigan. Two kills for him next to three assists. He's been a part of five out of Luminosity's seven kills. Luminosity still need to be careful, though, because with that Portal Demon having gone the way of in memory of Gabe at the last second. See ya. The team fight was great, but Barracuda just not feeling so great now. I, I mean, he thought that he was fine underneath the T2 tower, and uh, I mean, you can't really blame him in that circumstance since Sinosia did back off, but excellent follow-up by Sinosia. This and is this is, this is is why you first picked the circuit for the jungler. Look at the slash lines. Gabe gonna flip Jeff Hinla towards the rest of the team. Scary D from the backside, but he's an Osiris. He doesn't really have a big bang ultimate to change the face of the team fight. So Luminosity instead are the first ones on the board. That's gonna be Mask getting the kill here. Snoopy trying to fight into it very low, however, still winds up taking out the clone, not the real character. And that's the backflip. Mask still here and shuts him down. And hurry when now on the retreat away from Maz. Mask and Jeff not opting to try and follow up and look for the potential pick onto Hurrywin. And instead, it seems as though Luminosity are setting their targets onto this Gold Fury. So Scary D makes the wraparound. I mean, as the Osiris, that's not really needed. You can walk head first into the team fight. You're not going to surprise people with a giant petrified. I, I think Scary D mostly just wanted to try and be a body blocking factor as well as scare Gabe from trying to retreat towards him because sure. he's, he's really farmed right now. He's a, he's a big boy right now on this Osiris. Level 13 has a Pestilence online already, which is affecting the heal coming out from Hurrywind. So if he's just running around in the back line, mm -hmm. it will be preventing Gabe from utilizing this Changa heal as well as they would ideally want to. So it, it, it's not the worst decision in the world to just wrap around that backside and just be an overall threatening force. Plus, he does have the cleave damage coming out from his auto attacks already. So it, it, it's I, I think that's a safe play to make. Not a bad choice. Scary D opting to go for the, the assassin route there, wrapping around the backside. And actually, that one comes up in Luminosity's favor, I'd say, pretty pretty well. Extending their lead now to about 4K here. Scary D has been a decent part of it, but I think it's uh, I think it's the Mask show right now. Mask has helped Scary D over there in that solo lane achieve what he what he's getting and going for. And like I said, I mean he's 4-0 and three. You can't really argue with that one. 100. percent And Mask is really starting to highlight what teams have talked about in the behind the scenes aspect when it comes to concerns over the Morrigan. Right. She can be incredibly difficult to deal with, but. As hard as she is to deal with, she's also pretty hard to execute because should Mask mm -hmm. mess up in the slightest for Luminosity, he is a large portion of their damage as well as their engaging factor. So if Mask doesn't find the right spot to be in or the right usage of a kit, that's immediately probably going to be a loss for Luminosity. Exactly, and that, that's what's been so scary about the Morgan is the fact that it's it's all down to the to the pilot of the character. And this is the first day that I think we've seen some really strong Morgan play. Mask right here and earlier Benji out of the solo lane. Right now, Walrus is the solo laner that's in trouble. Surrounded by Luminosity members, the wall's not good enough. And Baskin picks up the kill from the mid lane. Here comes Mask. He's the Morgan, and he's going to be turning into Medusa. And he's going to be picking up the kill. Ionic falls down. There's one. And Sido answers back. That's the light in the darkness for in memory of Gabe. They need to lean on the jungler, who's looking for number two. But Barracuda's waiting in the hallway. Heroin picks up Scary D on the back. Blinking into the Scotty ultimate. Just what a reflex from Barracuda. Just as soon as he saw that yep. blink come out, knew that Sinozer was trying to engage onto Baskin and pop that ultimate right away. No escape whatsoever. And Sirket ultimately costing his life because yeah. of it. Yeah, like, like that's the play. I like the play. I like the idea coming out from Sino, but like I said, I mean, Barrow's just wait. <laughs> just, <laughs> hey, buddy, surprise. I don't, you know, I don't think Sino was really expecting that. 
That's who they have to lean on. In memory of Gabe, picked this character first for a sign on shore. Sir Cat right off the bat. Walrus is not going to be able to really make a shot here for the portal demon. Tosses down the ultimate a little bit too soon. Tremors, maybe he can do it. Oh. It's memory of Gabe. Walrus by himself sneaks away the objective. Baskin takes down Wally for it. But the portal demon does belong to Gabe. Here's the team fight afterwards. Scary D helped out by Jeff Hinla on the left side. All the members from LG going to filter on the left with the exception of Baskin. Who's giving chase to Ionic on the left. Scary D picks up Snoopy. And Luminosity find that their split up is successful, but they do lose that objective that they were looking for. It was such a beautiful ultimate by Hurrywin 2 on yeah. this Chunk God, but just no chance whatsoever for his team to follow up. They were already too poked out on the retreat, just trying to run away. And while it seemed like it would have been great for Disengage, it, it's so unfortunate to land a Chunk hole on that many people mm -hmm. and just not be able to follow up on it. <laughs> Walrus hits the ultimate and is not enough to take the objective, and he goes to the Tremors, at which point he says to his team, guys, I missed it, and he's just hitting the Tremors for, you know, for, for the hell of it, pretty much, and he winds up getting the steal. Is that, is that Luminosity just not securing the objective right? Sure, a bit of a misplay by Luminosity to not properly secure the Portal Demon there, but when you think about it, they got a better deal out of that because not only did it force Gabe to expend some of their ultimates, but they also lost their solo laner, mm -hmm. forced a really awkward fight for memory of Gabe, and ultimately they're just not even able to utilize that portal demon because they're they're pretty yeah. behind at this point in time. They, there's a 6k, almost 7k gold disparity between these two teams, and Luminosity's draft is probably a bit more favorable once these gold disparities and experience differences start to really come into play considering that they have this Morgan available and when you've got two fairly fed characters fighting into your team that, that becomes incredibly difficult to deal with and I mean also not for nothing it's just for the sake of the matter that it's less than a thousand gold for that portal demon so exactly perhaps the wrong objective to go into gold fury is the one that you want and it looks like Luminosity really want the Gold Fury. Kind of just dancing around it. A little, little bit awkward at the moment. They want and the fight. In memory of Gabe, know that they want the fight, though. And exactly. that's why they're trying to tread so much caution around this Gold Fury. But it's already down to 20% health. Luminosity going to unleash it. Jeff Hinla with the big flop engage. And, and here, now here comes Scary D in the back line. He's by himself, however. Does put out damage on to Snoopy. And Herwin has to find an exit down south as well. Sonoshore gone. He's out of the fight. Not dead. But Barracuda and friends clean up on the side of in memory on the side of Luminosity. Taking down Walrus and Snoopy. And Ionic Barracuda. Really? Doing the heavy lifting for his squad. Five, one, and two. Game number one, Barrow couldn't be the catalyst because he was stuck under the opposition here. He rises above seven kills, five kills for the hunter, seven with his name on it. Give Barracuda a little bit of farm and he will farm your team. That is exactly what he is doing in game number two right now too, in memory of Gabe. Snoopy, one, three, and four, hasn't really had much of an opportunity to have any sort of presence in comparison to the first set or the first game where Barracuda was the one being completely controlled, and, and now the tables have a purely turned, and Bear is just having a complete free rampage on this Scotty and probably loving it because there is nothing better than being an immobile hunter who can deal a ton of damage <laughs> getting to free cast in the back line. So Snoopy having, I think Snoopy has had a different style impact, and I think that's largely in part due to the type of character. We saw Snoopy make the early and mid game rotations on the Cupid, and that cripple field we saw the Fantastic Zone come out while they secured objectives. He's able to secure some kills. Snoopy, on the other hand, now, it, it wasn't as successful. He's not as successful in general as game number one. But I think Snoopy's impact is different here, where he's helping Wal he's helping Sino and Walrus get the kills on a scary D, or at least the attempted kills, right? So that's how Aneath is going to impact the game differently than, than the Cupid. So I think part of it is down to, yeah, his team just isn't doing the things. But it's also, it's also the idea that he's on a very different character. Snoopy's not expected to do a lot of the damage here. This is when it really falls onto... Honestly, that's why the team first picks to sign a short pick. Walrus just walks into everybody, and he's going to fall down. Basket with the kill out of the ultimate. 
And the rest of the team is trying to find safety in the jungle. The wrong neighborhood for Walrus to be walking around as a Kabrakan and completely punished for it as well. Mass just trying to pop off the Medusa ultimate, see if anybody was hanging around that corner. Unable to find someone, but ensuring that a memory of Gabe is backing off entirely. And mm -hmm. that's still a win for Luminosity. And now the interesting aspect here will be to see whether or not they can secure their first portal demon of the game. <laughs> And they're looking for it, and they're likely going to get it. In fact, <laughs> absolutely will. No one to contest this time. Yeah, nobody on In Memory of Gabe can really even show up. So that's going to be LG free and clear. They're going to pick up the Portal Demon, and we'll see how quickly they come back to really go for the Fire Giant. And it's right away. You can see the Hunter making his way over there towards it. Baskin trying to play safe. Looking to see who's around. Oh, but Gabe is backing right now. Luminosity needs a hard... Well, not so much Then Ionic is here. Luminosity want to do the same thing they did with the Gold Fury. I think Taco is... They'll look for the objective, but they really want to kill anybody that shows up. It's scary, D. Just zoning out Sign Nozier, pushing him as far away as possible from this side of the Fire Giant. And realistically, there's nothing that Sign Nozier can do facing up against that Osiris by himself. Nah. He is so massive right now on his Osiris. 2 2 12, level 18, facing off against level 16 circuit. Plenty of defense online, plus a Frostbound and a Wing Blade. Fire Giant low. Here comes Walrus in, looking for the steal. In memory of Gabe, are kind of in the conversation. Luminosity, P. They don't want it anymore, but the Fire Giant still goes to them. Barracuda picks up two, and Scary D cleans up the third. Two players alive. One is Sadoshore. He wants nothing to do with it. And one is Hurwind, and he's dead. So that's not even part of the conversation any longer. Luminosity, 22 to 6. You're looking at a college graduate versus a toddler here, folks. That Luminosity was just walking down the right lane. That was so unfortunate for In Memory of Gabe. What looked like for a moment would be a very successful Fire Giant yeah. steal just ultimately resulted in complete and total disaster due to that Medusa, Medusa ultimate falling through and just mm. wrecking havoc onto In Memory of Gabe. Are you still a toddler at six? Does that count? I, maybe. I don't know. I, I think it's ages four through six. That's pretty reasonable. All right. So then I was on the money. Yeah, 10 points to me. Either that or I was just a really really old toddler <laughs> well i mean i might still be i know i puberty came and then it left and i don't think that it finished doing the job so now i i mean i've got what i've got and you know i know what luminosity have got too and that's another t1 tower in the soul lane as well as what's about to be a t2 and with all of the towers falling off the map for a memory of gabe that's just two phoenixes that are going to be completely exposed you can keep going. I mean, if you're just going <laughs> to sit here and roast yourself, I am totally down. I mean, this is this is fun. Usually I have to roast aggro. I have to do the hard work myself. But if you're just going to stand here. I accepted things a long time ago <laughs> for being the way that they are. Because here's, here's the backside to this. When I was younger, I hit a growth spurt out of nowhere. I don't believe and it. And everybody thought I was actually going to be tall. There is and no... And then what ended up happening is that growth spurt stopped Everybody else hit theirs, and because that was their puberty happening, but it didn't cut off halfway through. So nowadays, I, I get the voice cracks, I, I get the boards to stand on that can make me pretend of what it would be like to feel five foot four for once in my life and hit that top shelf at the grocery store. <laughs> but for now, I don't, and I'm all right with that. Either way, <laughs> Taco's got some issues to deal with, and Gabe has to deal with Luminosity barreling down the mid lane. They, they're playing for the game here. Baskin picks up one. There's two for Kuda, and they're not done. They're going to go right for the Titan. Scary D picks up Snoopy. A little bit of a chase onto the kill, Baskin and Scary D. Of course, it's those two. The, the rest of the team is actually going to listen. <laughs> But it's Barracuda, Jeff Hindla, and Mask doing the hard work, taking down the Titan. If I could, if I could really represent <laughs> that team in a nutshell, it's it, it's it's that. Scary D running off to try and find some kill, and Mask, Jeff, and Barra just going. All right, we'll do the, we'll do the actual chores of taking down the Titan. You know something else too about a lot of those fights and the way that they ended up is that Sinosure a lot of the times was the only surviving member yeah. because he was as Sir Ket, he was really the only one with the with the top escape potential exactly and their draft you could tell was just entirely based around picks and unfortunately just unable to find them in luminosity 
they well they found the team fights. Smart split coming out from the guys of Gabe and the the players on LG. Honestly, in in each of their respected win, respective wins, both teams looked absolutely fantastic. Really, just couldn't bounce either way back out of it. Either either way, it's going to be a one to one split coming out with these two teams. We have Toli and Hindu Man standing by to break down the match. Well, what a way to end week five here. Memory Gabe up against LG, and it's exactly what it lived up to be. A close encounter, totally, between two of the top teams in North America, and considered top teams as well, splitting down the middle. I'm not really surprised by either of these two teams. The counter picks, the picks, just the action between them two. They were separated earlier on by three points, and mm -hmm. just like that, boom, they get a point each. And moving a little bit further in the standings is Luminosity at 11. They're basically putting one point above themselves from E United. Well, let's take ourselves back to game one there. And for me, it was the Snoopy show. And it came down to that Cupid pick. It was a last pick, totally, into the Barracuda's Jibalonke. And there's nothing worse than you want to do than pick Jibalonke against the Cupid. Well, obviously, it wasn't picked into the Cupid, unfortunately, for a Barracuda. Not only did he have the counter matchup not go in his favor, but that he was also left alone 1v2. And then he got picked off for first blood, giving Snoopy a lot of leeway, being able to make these kinds of rotations, making an impact at every stage of the game. He went very unchecked in the team fights more often than not, Tully, and that's kind of how it felt. The other threats that Memory of Gabe were putting to the forefront allowed Cupid, Cupid just to continue at the back picking up these kills. That's why Snoopy did have the second top player damage for his team without a single death that whole entire game, and then the rotations from Sinusher as well on the circuit basically made his job that much easier. It did feel like two one-sided affairs, let's be honest. That first game went heavily into Memory of Gabe's favor here, Tully, and it didn't look like Luminosity really had a way back into it from the start. Absolutely. That's why in memory of Gabe, they got 15 kills throughout the game. They're only giving up three deaths in return. And the assists as well. 15 kills, 50 assists. Just shows how many people were involved in collapsing to pick up these kills for them in game one. Game two, though, that's where we saw LG start to bring things back. Morrigan Jungle for Mask was pretty good there. There was a lot of performances overall from that team, though. They were very solid to get. LG, the answer back of the win. Absolutely. More importantly, it was Baskin playing the Medusa in the mid roll. That was basically, they tried to go onto him in the mid, but it just wasn't really working out this time around. Yeah, there's a lot of performances from LG where they just looked to, to synergize a little bit better. The whole combination of the kits, when you think about the fact that you've got a Morrigan jungle that can become any hunter she wants, and then you've got a Medusa and, of course, Barracuda Scardi Ooh. that you could turn into if you need. Well, you didn't need two Barracudas, really. You only need the one. He does plenty of work. He did so much work that game going 9-1-5, and five, having 16,000 player damage this time around. Doing a great job showing why Scotty is such a dominant pick. Very difficult to really lock down a Scotty and Diver in the back line as uh, Caldair can easily root you. And on top of this, imagine this. Obviously, Scotty and the Medusa, and then Mask going another Hunter in the yeah. lake and triple Hunters. Absolutely crazy. And this is just a very similar situation to game one where Snoopy gets left unchecked. Barracuda, the same sort of thing that you see Sinusha trying to collapse onto him, but there's not a whole lot he can do when he's always surrounded and protected by his team so well. The communication was very efficient here for the side of Luminosity this time, protecting their late-game hyper-carry Hunter. And this is why Luminosity has been such a top-tier elite team this entire split, even including the ending of the Season 3 one. There's some nice easy pickups for him at the end there. 1-1 one, one is the tail of the tape. 72 assists, 26-6 six six in terms of kills there in favor of LG to make it a 1-1. One, one. And then, well... That's the end of week five, pretty much so far, Tully. The funny thing about North America today, there was no chance for any team to actually succeed and get a top two spot. But going into the last week now, it's all still to play for. That's right. When we look at the standings here momentarily, we're going to see how close these North American teams are standing side by side. Eager sitting at 14 at the top of the charts. Luminosity right at 11. E United right underneath at 10. And more importantly, Luminosity and E United are going to face off on Sunday. And not just that, E United also have to face off against Memory of Gabe. So E United have a good chance to take a top two spot away here from Luminosity and Memory of Gabe. Memory of Gabe and Luminosity not out of the running either. The only downside I can see is Flashpoint are very, very much on the cusp of being involved in relegations for sure. Absolutely. It's not looking too pretty for Flashpoint. They kind of have to figure out what's going to work for them in the gauntlet phases, trying to qualify themselves through that rigorous ladder to qualify for that Masters land. Totally. We're coming to the end of week five in the SPL. How do you feel the teams have worked out so far in North America and Europe as well? Has there only been any surprises for you so far? Honestly, United has definitely stepped it up, I would say, for the most part. After their poor performance in the ending 
of Season 3. I didn't have much expectations for them in Season 4, but knowing that the former enemy squad definitely is kind of the meta creators, mm -hmm. they've kind of shown what they're capable of doing, especially having a new motivated soul, well, not new necessarily, but their old soul leader, Benji, back into the thick of things. So they're looking a lot stronger than expected. Well, only one team has secured their spot for the Masters land so far. That was Obey yesterday. Europe still have people trying to compete to get to that number two spot, and then Gortland will happen as well. Last thing to mention as well is the caster. Make sure if you do want to sign up to try and compete in the competition that we're going to be running here at Hyro Studios, you can head over to the caster.tv prize of $10,000 for the winner. It's a lot of gems that you can buy with those $10,000. Mm, a lot of everything you can buy with ten thousand dollars, that's for sure. But that's pretty much all we've got time for this week, Tully. But tomorrow we have the Smite Console League once more continuing. Make sure you tune in at one o'clock, one p.m. EST, to make sure you can catch all your Smite action needs. If this weekend wasn't enough and you needed more action to do, for everyone here though at High Rise Studios, it's been a wonderful weekend. We'll see you all for console tomorrow. And next week is the final week of the Spring Split.